Hi, this is Zwei, second year mathematician from Exeter College, University of Oxford. Um, the good side about studying mathematics at Oxford is that you have a lot of options to choose from, so you always manage to find something that you like to study. And I did an open application, so what it means is that I let the system to choose the college randomly for me. Um, however, I would suggest doing your research before making the decision. So I did three interviews, um, two at Queen's and one at Exeter. Two of them were okay, and one of them wasn't that great, but overall it was it, it feels fine and the advice that I can give is that to stay calm and speak out loud your ideas so that the professor will know what you are thinking about. In the maths admission test, um, it's a uh, two and a half hour exam for 10 multiple choice questions and a few of the long written questions. The question gets gradually harder and According to my personal view, the exam itself is getting harder as well. Um, so it's better to get prepared by doing the past papers. And the average score to get into Oxford is about 74 out of 100. So the full mark is 100. And to be safe to get in, you better get uh, around 75 or 74. So besides doing um, past papers, you would also like to analyze on your mistakes in those papers, so don't just um, do and leave it there, but actually like um, use the mark scheme that they give um, on the MAT website and um, check them and analyze why you did some questions wrong or work on some of the knowledge that you lacked. For example, in my case, um, I wasn't that great in integration and functions, so what it is was I uh, look out for some reference books and work on them uh, and I found some uh, other questions for example um, I did some questions from the American maths competition um, just to work on this week just to work on this uh, week, week spots and gradually as you do the past papers you'll see that your marks will improve and the point where you improve to the average score to get in, then you'll be quite confident to take the test. So in Oxford, you have this unique tutorial system. So in every tutorial class, I get about two to four students um, for one tutor. And the good side about this is that you get to ask um, personal questions and you get to build a close relationship with your tutors. Um, the the disadvantage though is that you need to spend a lot of time to prepare well for the tutorials or the tutors will find out that you are actually not doing your homework. Um, yeah. So to add a little bit more regarding my course and my tutorials, um, I usually do about four to five modules every semester and for each module I'll be given a problem sheet which is a homework to do every once uh, per week or once every two weeks. And after I finish the homework, I'll need to hand them in for the tutors to mark it. And we'll have a discussion um, regarding the homework during tutorials. So most of the time will be spent on discussing the mistakes that you made in your homework. Or sometimes the, the tutors will ask you to go um, to the whiteboard um, to write down your ideas or explain why you did it, this, this question in a certain way. And after we finish discussing uh, all, all the questions, we sometimes have the luxury uh, of extra time and the tutors may give you extra questions to do on spot, which is quite scary, but sometimes, most time, they will um, discuss things that are not taught in the textbook. So like, they, they, they like to go beyond the textbook. So for example, I was learning a numerical analysis and I was learning uh, ways to ways for computers to compute eigenvalues of a matrix and after finishing the after finish discussing all the questions on the problem sheet we um, continue to discuss about um, alternative ways that are not taught in the textbook and we also discuss a little bit about what are the usual ways that are actually practiced in the computer industry
So um, the interesting part about tu tutorials is that it can go very very deep uh, beyond the textbook, and but before that you will need to prepare well for tutorials. So you need to make sure that you actually finish your homework and you actually understand the basic materials uh, that is taught. So then there will be extra time for you to discuss some things that is that you like and something that is um, you won't learn in your classroom. People are often um, worried about the work-life balance in Oxford and I would say that you will definitely do more work studying um, compared to other unis. I'm not sure about Cambridge though, but we, you do do a lot of work um, during the term time, but you do get a longer period of holiday also due to the short term time. So it's more of a work hard and then you get to rest for a longer time here. Regarding life besides studying, I joined um, the Oxford University Malaysia Club, OUMC, as a, a treasurer, but I'm a former treasurer right now. And what I did is that I joined with reports uh, for the university regarding the account of our society and as well as organize some fun events, for example, our bubbles, bubble tea social. And besides that, I also did regular jogging and as well as some occasional chess match for the Oxford Chess Club. So there is time and opportunity to do something besides studying and you wouldn't need to worry that you need to give up your hobby. What I like about Oxford is the atmosphere that you get. There are a lot of pretty architectures and you have um, nice libraries, very, very ancient libraries with a lot of books in it. And you have a group of hardworking peers who will motivate you to study hard as well. And that is in general, I think, makes Oxford a good place to live in and study. And that's why I liked it. Let's talk about some fun stuff in Oxford. In Oxford, we have something called formals. So if you have watched Harry Potter, the people in the movie um, have meals in the ancient huge dining hall. And we do have that tradition as well, and we call them formals. It's a dinner where everyone wears formally, sometimes the academic gowns, and have a three to four course meal in an ancient dining hall um, with, I don't know, 16th century paintings right, on the walls. Regarding food in general, um, Oxford has a lot of varieties of food and there are one to two restaurants which serves Malaysian food. The only thing is that it is quite expensive, but there are quite a lot of good food in Oxford and one that I particularly like is kebabs. So um, don't be too worried about not having um, good food in Oxford. Some people ask whether Oxford is worth it. I think the question depends on your personal goals and as well as your financial background. So if you are a person who would like to go as deep as possible into your subject, for example, if you are planning to become a professor in the future or work in an academic field, then I think Oxford is a great place to do that and it's totally worth it. <laughs>